In this lesson, we explore how to integrate redundancy into storage solutions with the appropriate RAID configurations. The acronym RAID is interpreted as Redundant Array of Independent Drives or Redundant Array of Inexpensive Disks. RAID provides redundancy to protect storage in four ways called RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, and RAID 10. There are other RAID levels, but they're not commonly used or supported. An organization can implement RAID using a hardware controller or a driver included with an operating system. Hardware solutions are usually faster. Before we look at redundant RAID models, we need to address RAID 0. If an organization needs faster storage access and doesn't care about redundancy, RAID 0 is a good choice. The first level with redundancy is RAID 1, also called mirroring. It writes blocks to two drives. This duplicates all written data. RAID 1 provides excellent redundancy in case of a single drive failure. If a drive fails, the new drive is automatically populated with the data on the remaining drive. This auto-population of a drive is very fast and causes almost no performance degradation. The primary disadvantage of using RAID 1 is the requirement to use one half of the total storage for copied information. Also, hot swapping may not be possible depending on the solution implemented. Hot swapping is usually needed if the mirroring supports a critical business process. Best use case for RAID 1 is support for critical business processes on servers with a limited number of disks. RAID 5 is the most common use of RAID. Unlike RAID 1, RAID 5 requires at least three drives. Like RAID 0, Data blocks are striped across all drives. Unlike RAID 0, RAID 5 also places a parity checksum on one of the drives for each block written. Reads from a RAID 5 array are very fast. If a single drive fails, there is no interruption to the supported business processes. Also, much less storage is used for redundancy than in RAID 1. If a RAID 5 drive fails, performance suffers. Performance can be further affected during the rebuild of a new drive. Drive rebuilds can take from hours to days to complete. These are reasons why other RAID level choices might be better when performance hits are never acceptable. The VRLA Tech RAID calculator lets us determine how much disk space is available for storage and the speed increases with a given RAID array. This is the link to the calculator I use throughout this lesson. Storage we can use for data is reduced with RAID 5, but not by half. Also, notice that RAID 5 significantly increases read speed, but write speed is slower than writing to a single drive. Increasing the number of drives increases both the storage and the read speed. Read speed always increases as we add drives to the array. Throughout this lesson, the speed gains are based on how much faster RAID is than reading or writing from a single drive. RAID 5 is a great redundancy solution. It's good enough for many data center solutions. It's important to remember the possible performance issues, however. RAID 6 is similar to RAID 5. It uses striping, and writes parity blocks to protect data. The difference is the second parity write. For each data block written, two parity blocks are also written. Each parity block is written to a separate drive and neither is written to the same drives as the data. RAID 6 provides the same read speeds as RAID 5. Further, up to two drives can fail without data loss or interruption to business processes. RAID 6 writes are slower than RAID 5. If quick storage updates are an issue, then RAID 6 might not be the solution you need. Also, RAID 6 uses at least 50% of storage for parity writes. Adding more drives increases the percentage available for storage. Finally, RAID 6 is more complex, making it 
take much longer to rebuild failed drives. RAID 6 is a redundancy approach to consider if a large number of drives is possible and write delays are not an issue. Another consideration before selecting RAID 6 is the length of time performance might be affected when rebuilding a drive replacement. Although RAID 6 reads are faster than using a single drive, it is slower than reads on RAID 5. Also, with the minimum four drives, about 50% of the drive space is used for parity. However, adding drives increases RAID 6 speed and increases the percentage of drive space available for data storage. RAID 10 is a combination of both mirroring RAID 1 and striping RAID 0. While it improves recovery and reading speeds, RAID 10 uses 50% of storage for redundancy. As with RAID 6, the number of drives cannot be a problem if an organization implements RAID 10. But RAID 10 has the fastest read performance. It also eliminates most, if not all, performance issues associated with the drive loss. Finally, one drive per RAID 0 array can fail with no loss of data. For example, our example RAID 10 solution could lose the two drives indicated without an issue. Recovery would be very fast after drive replacement due to mirroring. The one big disadvantage of RAID 10 is storage use for redundancy. Like mirroring, it's 50% of the total amount of disk storage available. Although the loss of storage is the same as for RAID 1, the read and write speeds are faster than with the other redundancy supporting RAID levels we've covered. As the number of drives increases, both the read and write speeds increase. Its performance and reliability make RAID 10 a great choice for storage area networks. Well, that's it for this lesson. If you have questions, please ask. And until next time, be careful what you click.